guys, Ponce here, and I'd just like to direct everyone's attention to Black Market Brawlers, the next featured gameplay mode, which is going to go live on the PBE soon, allegedly. So, yeah, to be clear, it's not on the public test arm right now. If it was, I'd be making a video about it. Um, so if you're looking for that actual in-game stuff and how this all plays out, check the description below, annotations, all that stuff. Um, I've also put in the description uh, all this text because this is a really complicated kind of... It looks like Riot spent a lot of time making this gameplay mode. Um, but I'm just going to quickly kind of summarize it. Um, you get these things called Golden Krakens through various means like killing people just generally over time, um, getting objectives, stuff like that. And then you can spend these things on different types of special minions which replace like the basic minions in lane. So you buy the minion, it'll permanently replace, like every time a minion wave spawns, uh, the thing you bought will spawn in the lane. Or basically it'll spawn in all three lanes. Um, and so there's this tanky type, there's looks like a damaging type, a DPS, melee DPS if you will, a range type minion, and some sort of support type minion. And uh, you can spend these golden krakens to upgrade their abilities, which are all listed here. And um, Or you can spend these golden krakens to just buff the stats on the minions. So you kind of have to choose between either, you know, what you're going to do with those things. Now, on top of that, there's also a whole bunch of items um, to purchase that are specific to this game mode. They're actually quite interesting. I gave them a quick read over. Um, I, I'm guessing maybe they're like the... Um, Riot sort of brainstorm experimental items that, you know, they might want to think about putting in game, but they know they won't quite work, so they just kind of get relegated to something like this, and they were like, hey, let's stick all those crazy item ideas we had into this one game mode and, you know, see how they turn out. So maybe if, like, some of these work, they'll tweak them and put them into game or something. Who knows? Um, there is precedent for stuff like that, like the um, the whole Mark Dash thing with ARAM. They took something from a custom game mode and put it in the actual game mode, if you want to call ARAM an actual game mode. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go over these really quickly. Um, first, we have Typhoon Claws. It's sort of like this um, attack speed for on hit type people thing. It kind of almost mirrors the um, uh, sort of a cross between Sated Devourer and um, what was that other item called? The sword that got sort of something. The one that got taken out of game. Uh... I can't remember. It's the thing like basically no one ever built. It was a super niche item. The thing where you would attack at max attack speed like really quickly three times, but you couldn't crit on it or something. Anyway, who cares? <laughs> Next we have Mirage Blade. This is an AD carry item. Uh, basically you can mark people and then you'll teleport away from them. So yeah, it's a kiting item. This seems crazy powerful. But I suppose you need that kind of kiting with all this you know crazy stuff going on all over the place. Oh, we skip one. Here's the Flesh Eater. So um, this is some sort of, uh, basically, it doesn't look that strong early on. It doesn't cost very much, but um, you auto-attack things, and then after five attacks, you can activate uh, this thing called Flesh Ripper, which you can only do on enemy minions, which is kind of interesting. So it's basically, I guess, designed to fight these crazy new minions. I don't know how strong they'll ultimately be, but I imagine they're relatively powerful. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it'll help you kill those, and then every time you do that, you gain a stack, um, or rather you get free AD. So it's basically sort of this infinitely stacking AD item. So anyway, everyone's kind of, I guess, like a mini crappier version of Nasus, I guess. That's the idea. Um, next we have Mirage. Oh, no, Mirage, I just went over that. So we have this thing called Lost Chapter. That's like a baseline item made from Fiendish Codex and Idol. It's a mage thing. And then it gets upgraded into a whole bunch of different, like it's a branching tree, that you, you know, based on what you want to specialize in. Um, for example, it can upgrade into uh, this Netherstride Grimoire. Uh, it's this is the um, this one has some sort of movement speed passive on it, um, or it can be upgraded into the, this Rite of Ruin, which is basically um, uh, a structure tower destroying version of the item, uh, or it can be upgraded to here Pox Arcana, which is basically some sort of like I guess it's almost like a, a mini version of um, uh, What's that guy called? Twitch's uh, Expunge. Or they changed the name. It used to be called Expunge. Now it's something different. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about, presumably. Uh, then we have this really weird one here. This one's built out of a Chalice of Harmony and Amp Tome. It's called Staff of Flowing Water. And, uh, you know, it acts like a, basically any kind of Chalice upgrade, except gain 30% movement speed and 10 mana regen per 5 while in the river. So that's kind of a very, very specialized item. Um, kind of neat, if you ask me. 
Um, another one we have here, this is kind of interesting one, Trickster's Glass, Haunting Guys plus Ruby Crystal, and it acts like a Haunting Guys, except it has this weird thing here called Disguise. Teleport to Ally and take on their appearance for 30 seconds. Casting a spell or attacking breaks the deception. So that's kind of cool. Um, I, I'd have to, that's just so weird. I'd have to think about, you know, what, who you'd want to build that on and kind of the instances you want to use it. Anyways, it's interesting. It's something to think about, definitely. Um, now, here's the one I like, simply because I like playing tanky champions, but this one's called Dead Man's Plate. Kind of on the expensive side, but has a unique passive, Dreadnought, while moving, builds stacks of momentum, increasing movement speed by up to 60 at 100 stacks. Movement quickly decays while not moving. So, I mean, you just have to continuously be moving. That's pretty easy. Uh, and the unique passive, you um, so when you attack someone, you apply this thing called Crushing Blow. Basic attacks discharge, discharge all momentum, dealing one physical damage per two stacks. So basically, if you ever attack anyone, that's their, it's, I guess it's the, it, it's being channeled into an attack, which I guess feels good. But at the same time, it's functioning uh, so that you, basically, every time you attack something, um, you're getting rid of your stacks and lose the, um, the movement speed. So it's kind of like, almost like a reverse... Uh, misfortune strut, you know, where she if she gets attacked, she loses movement speed. But this is like if you attack something, you lose movement speed. So I'm assuming you get to keep the movement speed stacks, even if you're attacked, but I can't be certain. It's, you know, this isn't live yet. So. Uh, next we have Martyr's Gambit. Oh, here's another interesting one. Bind yourself to target champion for the next three seconds, redirecting 60% of all damage dealt to them to yourself. So definitely some kind of supporty tank type item. You know, you wanted to protect that AD carry. I like the idea behind that. There's a lot of interesting actives um, in these items here. Another one here, Puppeteer. Um, so this one is basic attacks mark champions with a string for six seconds. Moving further than a uh, 1,000 range away from mark champions will break the string. And then the active, when you you know you have the string on someone, pull all champions marked by Puppeteer within 1,000 range towards you. Units move a maximum of 20, 250 distance on a 45 second cooldown. So that's, it basically turns everyone into, or whoever buys it, into a mini Diana, kind of, almost. Um, I like that. I, I don't know who you'd build that on. I mean, I guess, yeah, tanky AP is the idea here. It's a very interesting item. Um, build, having to build from Chalice of Harmony in for a tanky AP champion is kind of weird. So, you know, I'd have to experiment with that in game, but definitely another interesting active. Um, now, there's, here's a whole slew of support items here, or rather, a support chain. It starts at Merc Sphere, um, and then it gets this thing called Swindler Shield. Shield ally for 60 HP and regenerate gold, or generate gold equal to 25% of the damage absorbed. So that, that's quite interesting there. Um, uh, Self-cast shields will not generate gold from monster damage, so basically they don't want junglers using it. Now, they specify monster. I'm assuming that means you can um, you get uh, money from minion damage, so if you really want to. And it also specifies self-cast as well, so you can self-cast it. So as a support, you cast it on yourself, and if you really want to, I guess you could probably stand in front of a minion wave and then generate gold that way if you have to, or towers, um, technically. Oh, and of course, you know, you could use it in combat. I imagine that's the, the typical intended way of using it. And then there's the upgraded version, which doesn't seem to change much. Um, and then there's a thing called Globe of Trust, which um, the passive gets upgraded. And this thing called Safe Harbor and it leads, uh, reads, Lobs a bubble that shields nearby allies for 150 HP and generates gold equal to 25% of the damage absorbed. Maximum 100 gold per cast. So that's pretty neat there. Um, I guess it's like an AoE CDR version of um, Heart of the Mountain or, or whatever the top tier upgrade is for that um, Targon shield thing. And of course, you know, self-cast shields do not generate gold from monsters. Uh, oh, and lastly, we have Boots of Enchantment Teleport. So uh, basically, any two, tier 2 boots will allow you to teleport to allied object. Um, that is a Dota item, I believe. That's just a straight-up Dota item. I think it allows you to teleport to stuff. So everyone gets access, in theory, to summon or teleport. You just have to spend a lot of money on uh, getting the boots for it. Um, now, Hecarim tends to rush home guards really quickly anyway, so, I mean, it might be interesting to... Or rather, boots, too, really quickly for home guards. So, I mean, it might be an option to do that and stack things that way. Um, but just, yeah, generally speaking, might be worth it to rush teleport early. I don't know. Um... Certainly, there's a lot of other really cool items to spend money on, so it's going to be competing for that gold. But yeah, I really look forward to playing this mode. This looks really cool. Um, I just, I like the idea. And I'm pretty sure Riot, yeah, was just kind of dumping their cool item ideas into one game and just kind of seeing how it goes. 
Um, so it might not be the most balanced thing in the world, but these, you know, these short-term uh, custom game modes are not intended to be super balanced. So, yeah, interesting. I um, really look forward to testing this, guys. Stick around uh, on the channel. As soon as this is available, I will have the gameplay up um, and also be streaming this, I'm pretty sure. Like, this looks like a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, that's it for me for now. Enough yammering on about uh, this gameplay mode that's not actually out yet. Um, bye, everyone. Thanks for watching.